Hi guys, it's uh, seven thirty on a rather chilly uh, Friday evening here where I am in central Finland. Probably a bit warmer in central Europe, where it's only six thirty, and of course uh, superbly hot. I'm sure in the UK, which is yet another hour behind us. Welcome to Big on Wine Live. It's time for some more Melville mischief, some more wonders of wine. And it's time to roll those credits. Yes, indeed. Uh, welcome to yet another edition of uh, Big On Wine, the uh, show which, uh, as you probably know by now, tries to bring you uh, right up to speed. Indeed, it offers you uh, news, clues and reviews to all of you out there in uh, the world of wine lovers surrounding me out in the ether. Yes, indeed, uh, it's uh, time for another wine. And uh, this uh, week we're off to Germany's Rheingau. And uh, the wine uh, which we're going to be looking at, uh, boy, does it have a name. Um, the wine in question is Korver's Kauter R3 Riesling Rheingau Remastered organic and the vintage is 2020 and it comes in a bottle that looks something like this let's see whether we can get a decent picture of it there we are very very modern uh, etiquette art as you can see uh in fact uh, four labels on the bottle but it's uh, very attractive looking very modern and mm -hmm. um, we'll see whether the uh, taste is in accordance with the um actual uh, labeling there the look is good anyway and one of the great things about this wine is that it comes in for uh, under 12 euro a bottle where i am it's officially qualitates wine uh, rheingau okay now does rheingau actually tell you anything well <clears throat> let me fill you in on exactly where rheingau is uh, we're talking Germany, of course, and uh, the River Rhine, as it runs northwards. Of course, it uh, runs along the border with Alsace and then uh, turns uh, roughly around the Wiesbaden Mainz area. It turns left or west uh, for a, a distance of 35 kilometers or so. Um, before reaching the town of Bingen, where it again turns north. And it's along this 35 kilometres of the River Rhine between Wiesbaden and Bingen, um, on the north bank of the river, uh, where all those wonderful uh, Rheingau wines come from. Generally speaking, sunny uh, south-facing slopes on the north bank, as I said. Um, planted predominantly with Riesling, but also with some uh, Pinot Noir, which of course we know as a red grape does quite well in those cooler climates. Okay, Korver's Kauter, or to be more exact, Weingut Dr. Korver's Kauter, are based in a small place called Oestrich Winkel, which is right in the middle of this stretch of a river. Now, this is, of course, a single variety wine. It's a, a Riesling and a modern one at that. Um, according to the people that make it, carefully cultivated with uh, reduced yield through pruning. And of course, this was the cardinal sin of uh, German winemaking for a long, long time way back when, when we had uh, bucket loads of rather poor quality um, Liebfraumilch from the Silvana grape coming from very much the same area of Germany. Of course, things have now changed in a very positive uh, direction. So carefully cultivated and uh, <coughs> selected through pruning. And of course, a very competitive price of uh, under 12 euro a bottle where I am. So I'm looking forward to this one. 12.5% uh, alcohol in the wine. I've already poured myself a glass, which is here. And six grams of a residual sugar. 
Um, so uh, that puts it smack bang in the middle of the dry category. Now, everybody out there probably knows by now I'm a dry wine fanatic or fan anyway. And of course, this one should be very much to my liking. Let's take a look at the wine in the glass. And as we can see, it has a nice, fairly typical uh, straw gold uh, color to it. Very clear, very nice. Uh, looks very, very appealing indeed. All right, let's take a sniff um, and see what we can find in this particular wine. Yep, now that aroma on the wine, I would say, is particularly abundant, rich. It has a nice blend of different fruits. Now, let's see whether we can put some names on those fruits there. Now, the first aroma I'm picking up is of apple. But it's blended very, 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 very uh, clearly with something a lot more rich and aromatic. It's uh, almost peachy uh, and maybe even beyond into something like mango as well. But anyway, apple and peach very much to the fore in the nose. Um, what other observations can we make? Given the fact that this is a dry wine, it has a remarkably sweetish aroma to it so it's kind of a honeyed or a syrupy aroma to it in, in a very positive sense i have to say so apple peach maybe even a touch of something more exotic and uh, a rather sweetish aroma so packed with fruit and uh, a lovely honey aroma to it mm, very good indeed that promises a lot so time i think to actually taste it in the mouth here we go <clears throat> oh yes oh yes now this is a good one in the palate hold on a second have another little swig isn't that remarkable let's see whether we can um, put that flavor into words first of all a taste of the wine very much mirrors the aroma. So we're getting a multitude of fruit, mature, ripe fruits with what we might expect in terms of um, apple and peach. Very, very commonly associated with Riesling, of course. But here, the fruit is remarkably heavily emphasized in the nose and in the palate. Um, it has a pretty solid underpinning of minerality as well, particularly uh, comes through in the finish of the wine, um, and also a touch of herbiness here. So we're getting the full McCoy here, the full uh, 10 yards in this particular wine. Um, so abundant fruit balanced with a nice tangy citrus acidity. solid backbone of minerality green apple very much to the fore i think now in the palate but there's something more exotic in there as well in in the direction of uh, certainly in the direction of peach maybe even of mango the mouth is left clean and perhaps the distinguishing factor of this wine the wine almost has a slight fizziness to it which is extremely uh, enticing, um, in addition to that full palette of uh, fruit flavors. So wonderful, very nice indeed. Now, the serving temperature for a Riesling of this type and this quality, I think, has to be around the nine or a 10 degree mark. How are we going to be enjoying it? Well, if we're looking to uh, pair it with food, then I think, uh, you know, we're going to uh, probably um, be thinking of fish, grilled fish, uh, seafood. Why not? Um, 
chicken dishes too. This is a, a, a wine, I think, which is a pretty good all rounder, certainly stretched to uh, chicken dishes and salad. But hey, I would say this is one to try out with your friends. And why not just uh, enjoy a bottle of the uh, uh, Corvus Cauter uh, uh, Ranga Riesling R3 as is. Um, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful tipple indeed. So nine or 10 degrees, put it in the fridge for at least an hour before you serve it. What am I going to give this in terms of a rating? Mm, I am going to say that this particular wine, Corvus Cauta R3 Riesling Rango Remastered Organic 2020 is worth four stars out of five. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Okay, that was a nice find there. Uh, I've never tasted any wines from Corvus Cauter before, but uh, as I said a few weeks ago, the uh, Rheingau region of Germany, in terms of the wines it's producing, is uh, on the up and up. So check it out. Check out those Rheingau uh, wines, particularly the Riesling, but not only the Riesling, and this particular one from Corvus Cauter. And of course, uh, I'll be back again next week with another uh, great uh, wine of the week for you. A wonderful wine of the week. Let's see whether I can find a lovely red to bring to you. Um, do all those things that uh, viewers of uh, live streams should do. Please like, share, follow, uh, drop a comment down below if you feel that way inclined. And uh, I'll see you again next week with another great wine of the week. Until then, stay safe. That's it for tonight. Bye for now.